Yeah. Oh. Just, just that cool is oh, what I'm okay. saying. I hate. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I know Puppy. what you're saying. <laughs> we'll do it live. Yeah. It's a good podcast. I feel What's the other one? I got to come out of an upbeat tempo to a <laughs> damn dog <laughs> Yeah. Casey Kasem. Yeah. Oh, God. What's going on, everybody? I'm Casey Kasem. <laughs> you know they do the reruns, right? You ever listen to those? So good. They still, yeah, no. every, still, every week. Yeah, they'll, they're still doing they play blast. like a 1987 top 40. Like, I want to hear that finish. shit. It's actually, I mean... I know, but it's bad enough. I got to hear Kate Bush all over the damn radio as is. I don't need to actually go back and listen. Well, 87 would be dope. That was Appetite for Destruction and stuff. Well, my thing is, like, Casey Kasem was such a big part of my childhood. Like, it's just nostalgic. He's not even Casey Kasem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I never heard of him. It takes me right back to riding to and from church every Sunday. Okay, there you go. Because that's, that's when it was. That's when and it was we had on. a 30-minute car ride. There you go. I didn't know if you were trying to make some joke with your, you know, non-religious. <laughs> no, I went to church all the time as a kid. That's what all ruined the time. you? No, life ruined me. Okay. Fair I'm, enough. I'm still a fan of, of church, a lot of churches. Just most of them, well, not a lot, some. Sounds like you're a fan of potlucks. Like you would go to a potluck and just hang out, have some fellowship and some food. You'd be like, My That's church, good. well, finish your intro. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Pallet House, the only podcast dedicated to solving why Troy's an atheist oh. and helping you discover that. <laughs> We're going to solve that? <laughs> yeah, good luck. Oh. Therapy session. Yeah. Demons be gone. <laughs> yes. Yes, and hopefully helping you figure out how to solve some first world problems and what beer you should be drinking this weekend. I got high hopes for this beer. Me too. After last week. Last week's was a disappointment, to say the least. We are brought to you by Screen Door Mortgage. If you need a mortgage, please reach out to Jimmy over at Screen Door Mortgage. Real easy to find, ScreenDoorMortgage.com. You probably could have pieced that together, but I'm always <laughs> surprised at how often I reach out to people and I say, hey, are you interested in said thing? And they're like, ooh, what's that? And I'm like, it was just a Google away. Our conversation's yes, over. Yes, Right. <laughs> I, I hate that. Wait, is that. How can you find, how could I possibly find this information? Yeah, like... Hmm. Who knows? Is that dot com? Yeah, it's so <laughs> it's so frustrating, man. It, it is. Do you ever do like you send a text oh, yeah. and be like, "Hey, are you interested in going to this the show tonight at the National, whatever yeah, right. it may be?" And then it's like, "Oh, who's playing?" Well, it took you long, just as long to ask me questions as it would have for you to look it up. So I'm out. Now <laughs> let me eat. guess. This is in reference. to to trying to get people to go to the Ocean's Calling show. And people are like, who's playing? When is it? What time? Where? Literally every person. <laughs> every person that I texted and they said, they said, when is it? And who's playing? Yeah. That was the end of our exchange. Yeah. Because I don't have time to drag your ass through this whole process. Yeah. We'll stop by tomorrow at five. I got a PowerPoint ready, yeah. and uh, we'll just uh, get into the. Thick now I'm going to go to a music festival with someone who's incapable of finding out when a music yeah, festival. God is. forbid you get more than an arm's length away from me, and you get lost <laughs> and turn around. I mean, it, that you're may helpless. Be, it may be petty, but that's honestly, I was like, yeah, I don't want to deal with someone who isn't self sufficient enough. To at least figure out the dates and who's playing. Yeah. Just very quickly. Yeah. Just a quick Google search. Well, I'm sure you gave them the date, but like you can't. No, I literally said, do you want to go to the Ocean's Calling Festival? It's, you know. Yeah. In a couple weeks. At the end of this month. Yeah. You know. I, I had got, one question for him, which was tickets. how much? <laughs> okay. That is not something you can Google. <laughs> right. So that's perfectly yeah, fair. I asked who was going. <laughs> Again, you can't. Yeah. Find out who is going in my group. And actually the text had everyone in the group. Yeah. So yeah. like I was like, this person's going, this person's going, this person's going, you would be the other couple. And and I'm not I'm literally everyone who said, When is it? Or who's playing? <laughs> I stopped communicating with them. If you know anything about a music festival, and I mean the barest of minimums, you know it is comprised of one to fifty headliners that you've heard of. And one to 200 people you've never heard of. So no one can rattle off 
I can't. Who's playing what music festival? It could be the biggest music festival. And I don't know what's necessarily important to you. Yeah. Like, not trying to be like, but you know what I mean? Like, it shouldn't even I didn't tell you my top you 10 bands. You didn't tell me who was yeah. was going to be there. I would have been all in. Yeah. 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 Nope. Never crossed my mind to exactly. even give a shit about Hoobastank Tank. Yeah. So they weren't on my radar. The question exactly. is who cares who's playing? It's a music festival. If you like to go to the music festival, go. The bigger question is who's going with me? Yeah, which like who's, can't, can't you, be you found can have online. Fun, you can have fun with, you can have fun watching paint well, dry if you're at the right people. I mean, for that, <laughs> it, you, I'm not going to shit on your points, so I agree with you. But like this one, the Ocean's Calling one, like for people in our generation, to me, it's one of the best lineups I've ever seen. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm sure we'll break it down on next week's episode because yeah. I'll be fired up because I'll be going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there is a point. And this may show that I'm I'm old in general. There is a point where if I'm texting with you and the questions have gotten out of hand, I either I I probably just need a phone call. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not a phone like I used to be a phone call guy because I'm old. So I was always like and now now I've really embraced. Yeah, I was the text. I was late to the texting game, but I'm I'm with you. I'm kind of coming back around. Yeah. Like I've embraced the whole text thing. That's perfectly fine. Like. We can talk all day on text. But I'm not anti-phone call. No, I just, there's a point where if you send me a list of fucking 10 questions and then I answer them and then you send me 10 more questions. I'm out. You're getting a phone call or I'm done talking. Yeah. Yeah. Because people have gotten so anti-phone call that most people get on the phone and they know how to keep it to a minute. Yeah. Which is great because I can be like, all right, here's this, here's this, here's this. Does it bring up any other questions? Okay, good question. This, this, this. And then they're like, well, I really have to go. And I was like, I never wanted to talk. Well, I mean, you guys are probably, (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I experienced this, but like your, your, your wife or your girlfriend is texting the next next door neighbor and they're texting for like (laughs) the last, you know. 45 minutes to an hour just texting back and forth having a conversation about what they're planning and I'm like if you picked up the fucking phone yeah, the whole thing would have been done minutes. in five minutes yeah, yeah. and I think they just enjoy I'm like no I'm just if it's that quick I'm gonna call you oh I find if my it, wife can text all day with people <laughs> just all day and just nonsense I'm down to text all day and I'm down for all that but like certain yeah. like after a while it's like hey buddy I'm not against talking to you I kind of like yeah. hearing your voice it's been fucking two months like what is going on? What else yeah. is going on? Well, that's like, it's the, it's the most unintrusive thing. I do it all the time with clients. I will text them or even friends sometimes. Hey, can I chit chat with you? That's the text. Oh, my favorite. And then he was like, okay, cool. There's so nothing better than a text of like, hey, I'm free for the next couple of hours. Call me when you got a moment. Yeah. yeah. That's a very easy way to put it out there. Like, holler at me. This is going to take a minute. My uncle's yeah. retired and he's got it figured out because he, he knows like, Depending on my day at work, every day is a different day. And he just, he doesn't even, he doesn't ask me a question. He doesn't even get after it. He texts me busy. <laughs> when I get that text, I either go, yes, I'm in yep. a meeting or I call him and that's it. Like, yeah. and it, and even, or even if I don't text, he knows I'm busy. Like there's just, it's just a, an understanding. And I'm like, more people yeah. need to do this. Like, yeah. And then there's certain conversations that you know there's no way to get across the point in a diatribe text message that's like four pages long, and you're like, th- th- "I got to talk to you." Well, because- we've all been in text arguments or disagreements where, like, you know, subtleties and tones weren't picked up on. Yeah. Absolutely, I said something that was not meant to be offensive, yeah, yeah. and now you're you're pissed off. But I was like, "Well, obviously, you you heard a very different voice than right. what I was trying to yeah. send to you." Well, it's funny when it when when it gets to that that point in a conversation where there's you know it might be getting to an argument or something may you think was taken the wrong way. Without calling, sometimes Dick I'll pick. use the. Uh, well, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's what started the yeah. argument. <laughs> yeah, I'll settle this. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the button to do the voice recording. Sorry, so Grandma. Just, I'll drop the. I'll drop an actual voice recording in the text message of me saying what I want to say and just shoot it. That As way, the call. tone's there. Yeah, that way the tone's there, and there's no. Like, so like I don't do that. The That's fuck actually you smart. comes through, right? Or the, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the sentiment is there. I'm like because sometimes you can read something and type back a text, 
and then somebody gets upset and you're like, you can't even see the fact that I'm smiling at the same time I'm writing this or reading your text message. You I, take it the wrong way. Stu uses it to make sure that there's, there's no ambiguity to it. He's like, oh, voice memo. Really smart. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't want them getting confused. Yeah. I don't want them to think they're think really they, smart. You yeah. thought that was a good idea? Not so fast, my yeah. friend. Yeah. Ooh, aren't oh. you cool? <laughs> Hold my beer. <laughs> I am guilty though. Like I, I, I really don't mind talking on the phone, but it has to be at my own leisure, and that's usually when I'm behind the wheel. Like that's oh. the perfect time to get phone calls done. Absolutely. Yeah. And I if got you call me go. at like six o'clock at night when I'm at home with my family, like trying to do dinner, I'm ready to like just go ape shit, like start slamming shit. Like who is calling me at this point and why? I've got yeah. a I've got like a super awkward ringtone. It sounds like aliens are coming down. It's like it's like really kinda odd. I actually I don't even know how to really describe it. Here, you want me to buzz you? Yeah, go ahead. Give me a call. Okay, here you go. I want to hear this. And call it. This is this. I mean, it's. It is aliens. Yeah. It's a, you up. it's a weird one, right? So now let me get that off of. <laughs> don't ever want to hear that. But even with my phone in. Oh, and I dodged your calls, too. Oh, <laughs> let me text him real quick. <laughs> See if I get a hold so, of this motherfucker. <laughs> so I had that in my car. And this weekend I was going on a camping trip and I had, it was like hooked up to my Bluetooth. And so it just puts your ringtone through. Yeah. And I had the dog in the back. Oh God. And ah. that comes on. It's like, Woo! Yeah. and that dude would snap up, freak out and start climbing into the front uh. seat every time. So you didn't take the other dog. As in, like, no. <laughs> coming to protect you or fleeing the fucking alien mothership that's about to. I think the, the high pitch sound just like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely made him lose his mind, and he just started freaking out. He started crawling over the seats, and I had this one buddy who insisted on calling me over like, and over, like every so often. Where are you? To be like, hey man, this is where I am, or, or like, like, hey man, what did you say you want? Was it this yeah. or this? Like he just kept calling me back, and I'm like, dude, uh, you, you've got to stop. You got to stop calling me because it is it is freaking my dog out. And he'd be like, because I know you. All right, I'll you call you back. <laughs> like that's not. But, <laughs> Let me give you let me give you a second to think that rethink that Brendan and I'll call you back in 10 minutes. Cuz if I know Precisely. you you're by yourself in your in your forerunner. Yep. You got the windows down and you mm -hmm. got the music up. Oh, a thousand decibels yeah. cuz I need yeah. to be able to hear over all the yeah. going cuz there's no AC in there. <laughs> yeah, when I took the Jeep down to Virginia Beach without the doors a couple weekends ago like my hearing aids that's one thing that the hearing aids don't do well is the wind. Uh, so you it's just like out. so I take them out so then I'm really cranking the tunes up <laughs> yeah so yeah well that's the same that's, thing with your yeah if you call me, if you contact me in any way from your your jeep and mm -hmm. you're going through your hearing aids I hear it's a total warble yes yeah. hmm. it's crazy or but. the or or the car like oh even then yeah, yeah that yeah, makes yeah. sense yeah, that makes sense. I can't talk to anyone on my Bluetooth mm -hmm. in the runner when the, the stuff's up. Nah. Yeah. So then I have to roll everything up. Yeah. And then I'm just sweating to mm -hmm. have a conversation. So now I'm real pissed off. Yeah. Because like, if this is, I'm like, we can get off the phone now because <laughs> I am sweating like a I'm going to see you in an hour. Yeah, like we'll figure this out. Yeah. The time I will and meet you is X. Isn't the runner crank windows? No, power windows. They are? Oh, I couldn't yes. remember. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, Brennan's reaching over. Trying only to the best. <laughs> SR5, dude. Top, that was of the top of the line. That was new technology. Absolutely. Things got cruise control on it. Yeah. It's like, it's, pff, they were like, let's put all the tech in this. And the attitude gimbal. <laughs> that thing's awesome. <laughs> all the tech is in it. Yeah, but I'd get pissed off if I'm just sweating. How many that four door Cherokee I had, the 98 Cherokee, had, it was a stick shift, two wheel drive, but it had AC and. Maybe cruise control, but it had crank windows and manual locks. Oh, and I, yeah. and I love that truck. But God, like on a nice day when you wanted to roll all four windows down, or you had to let your friends in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's damn, a, it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. Dude, yes, I went. I went camping this weekend. I heard it wasn't yeah, too the warm. Crew. Man, it, it was beautiful out. Was, was it cold in the evening? Yeah, it was like fifty-eight degrees. Yeah, 
58 degrees is about the absolute perfect temp to yeah. be camping in. Because you get in that sleeping bag and you're like, whew, I'm, I'm all warm you in throw, here. You throw a sweatshirt on and you're good call to go. It, yeah. Call it a day, man. Didn't sleep by the fire pit or was there a fire pit? Oh, it was hell of fire pits. I brought my blowtorch. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to not let it be fire pits. But I uh, realized, you know, my dog is literally at the perfect age. There is a perfect sweet spot when you have a dog. And that age is four. When a dog is four, they are old enough to know everything you're saying to them. They know what's going to get them in trouble. They know what's going to keep them out of trouble. Yeah. They know how to hide if they're getting into trouble. Like they, they get it. They're, they're very smart, but they still have all that youthful exuberance of like, like they can jump up on the high things. They can go do stuff. They're not limping. Like they're, they're still youthful, but they're smart. It's, it's basically like a 25 year old. Yeah. Your head's out of your ass. Yeah. Body still works. Like this is, this is perfection. And I was thinking about it. I was like, man, he just turned four. He's like, I'm gonna go test this shit. I'm going to take him out in the woods with a bunch of drunk guys and see what he does. Everybody's seen Any this. other dogs? No. That's a game changer. Oh, that's, that's Everybody, a- when I showed up, they were like, damn, you brought your dog? Like, now you're going to have to watch the dog the whole time and, like, worry about him? I was like... Not your dog. Uh, I was like, I don't think this is going to be a problem at all. Like, he's four now. <laughs> yeah. Like, this, well, is the, this is the dog when you It's pull- different for every dog, though. Yeah. It is, but four is the age where that's as good as they're going to get. Yeah, because this is the dog that... You walk up your driveway. He jumps over the fence to come see me, yeah. and then you're like, "Get back over!" And he's like, "Okay, I'll jump back yeah. in." Yeah, my bad, my bad. Yeah, he <laughs> knows it's here. wrong, but he's yeah, but like, there's certain yeah. asshole dogs that like every time a door opens, they take off. Like, and they could be two or fucking twenty. Yeah, like there's yeah. just certain dogs that are just a holes like that. I guess so, but even those dogs are at their prime at four. But yes. this one yeah. proved like he was flawless. For 48 hours in the woods. I bet he was. I bet that was a fun time for him to hang out with all those guys in that setting. Man, he loved it because every time someone would get up and be like, I'm going on a mission, he would just hop up and just walk right alongside of them. Yeah. Like, Wonder where they're going. What yeah. are they? Yeah. Like, What's they'd, be, they'd be coming back with wood. He'd have a stick in his mouth. Like, yeah. we were getting wood. We got more wood. Like, that was, he loved it. So every time somebody went on a mission, he just He's went out there and then came back. And no one ever had to call him. No one yeah. ever had to do anything. Like, yeah. he was perfect. I was like, damn. He was the most popular dude there. So we did that. But that's not saying much with the crew you were with. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, it's funny because we, uh, we took Rudy. He's a year old. But we went down to the river with, uh, it was about six couples. And there was 11 dogs. No fencing on the river. And I'd have thought he'd have taken off and run. Because every once in a while when he, when he wants to, he'll just take off if he can get out the front door. But with those other dogs that were a little bit older, some of them were old, some of them were that middle range you're talking about. Yep. He just stayed. I mean, we had two houses side by side, about three acres. And those 11, seven, or the seven dogs or so just hung out with each other, played all day long, two days in a row. And then he slept for like a day and a half after that. In a situation like that, you just need one bad dog, though. <clears throat> these were all like, good, these like, a lot I'm, of doodles, a lot of laughs. I'm going to go check out some stuff. And yeah. then the other dogs are like, Where's Randy going? Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, the biggest the biggest problem was we all had our lawn chairs out looking you know looking over the river sitting on the banks, and every single one dog started it. I can't remember, but one dog lifted up his leg to pee on the chair, and then yeah, every single chair got every fucking male. marked. <laughs> that is that is basically my dog loves to mark chairs and shit. Yeah, like, yeah. He'll mark all. I, our our buddy Nick was putting up like a, a tent. <laughs> my dog rolled up it was just peeing on it. i was like you might want to move your foot he was like what the fuck yeah <laughs> this is mine now <laughs> yeah but he was like as soon as that stake went in the ground he was like oh hell yeah new territory that's mm. my thing about people who take their dogs everywhere it's like dogs are gonna dog they're dogs. And, and when one mm-hmm. dog does that and you're in a public setting like a home depot or something and i've taken my dogs to these places so i'm i'm part of the problem but like once one does it, they <laughs> smell it, and then it's like, guess this is the peeing spot. Game on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fortunately, Wrigley only had himself. When you were outside. He, yeah, everything was peeable. But, like, in an airport, that's a fucking bad time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't really, didn't really think about it. I mean, that. Home Depots, yeah. you're like, all right, it's concrete floor, and you're pissing yeah. on a, yeah. uh, a, you know, 
a metal I beam that's holding a rack up, but not the end of the world. But. Commercial grade carpet that's in the yeah, airport, yeah, yeah, just yeah. holding a puddle right there. The good stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he he was he was good. We had we had one guy out there, the White Knight, and your brother. Yeah, Stu. They uh, one of these dudes brought a TV, like went all the way out to the woods, but could not not have his TV right to watch what like oh, have an college, college, college like, football like with an antenna. No, they had their phone hooked up. Oh, wow. They were bringing it in, you know, had like a, a, a charger charging it. And just, like, co- just streaming just, off uh, streaming it. Yeah, they, had, they had four games on the TV. So we drive all the way out there. And then these dudes pull out their TV and set it up. And they sat there from noon till two in the morning, just drinking beer and watching football. I was like, was that's that, camping. Was that disappointing? I just find it odd that if you're going to go camping... That you would bring a television, set up a big old canopy, yeah, and then just sit there and watch football all day like you were at home. Yeah. And those mm. two were literally next to each other the entire day. That's a gambling issue. That's definitely <laughs> no no. A hundred percent. They had a ton of money on all the games and they were just sitting there. But like we were like off well, in the I, woods. If I'm not and, mistaken, I think my brother he didn't even tent it. He made a pallet and slept in his Tahoe laid flat. Oh yeah, there were a lot of lot of truck sleepers. That's become all the rage. Okay, it's it's called overlanding, Stu. Oh, okay, sorry, we're overlanding. I was I was in the truck. <laughs> There's something to be said for it. I mean, it's, it's less nice. hassle. Definitely less hassle. I mean, I slept in my I went camping in my minivan. I mean, mine has yeah, yeah minivan's big too. We're, yeah, mine had like mine has like a little tent that just comes off the back, so you can put the tailgate down. You get that extra mm-hmm. bed length. Yeah, but that's like easy enough to put up. That like I w- I put it up, and then the next morning everyone was bitching they wanted to go get breakfast. I just took it down, loaded us yeah. all up in the yeah. truck, went and got came back. Put it I knew back up. I knew I was getting up a certain age when one of the Carneyland camping trips with a lot of the fraternity brothers, a couple guys slept, quote unquote overlanding, but they were in their cars that had full plugs. You know, two twenty plug. Yeah. So they could run their CPAP. One twenty. Yeah. Uh, One twenty for the run their CPAP. Run their CPAP. So yeah. they slept in there because they could plug it in and make their CPAP. So we're like, damn, this is where we're going. That's what <laughs> keeps me from going camping, pretty much. You like, do bitch about that. Yeah. You're like I need my CPAP. Love it. But yeah, but my you, my you, Jeep has a, an outlet. Yeah. So you they can, make inverters too, yeah. but then you got to run the car, and it's going to drain your battery. Yeah. yeah. I get that. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to burn three gallons of fuel so I can sleep. No. But the converter from your ashtray or from your lighter, does that that's just going to draw off the battery? But I don't, would it kill your battery? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it draw <laughs> off. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds like a Honda generator to me. Yeah. Those new generators are dope. They sip gas too. Like yeah. it's, oh, you yeah. get three gallons last year the weekend. Oh yes. Yeah. No. I did. I did. Yeah. I did. Uh, like I've got well, a generator that will go through eleven gallons in like. But no those time. little those little suitcase ones yeah. that Honda makes are like two. But that's not watts. power in the house. No. 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 no but no, it's no. power. Mine's designed to like yeah. backfeed the house. But you, it'll burn oh, yeah. gas oh, yeah. like like a fucking Chevelle. Yeah. Going down the highway. Yeah. I'm every talking six like, or eight hours. You got to fill it up. Yeah. I used one of those little Honda ones for a sixteen foot travel trailer, and it lit up everything. Nothing. Okay. You're not pulling any wattage. Yeah, no, I mean, it's no, just light. Not a lot of amperage is going through there. Yeah. It was just LED lights yeah. and the heater. Yep. The heater's a big ticket item. The fuck is this? The Golden Bachelor? They got old bachelors now? Old bachelor. Oh, yeah. Do you see this? The age of these women? Between. Oh, have, no. That's just what I looked up, and I'm seeing like. The youngest is. the. It's a minimum of 65, I think. I mean, they just showed like a girl come out, and like, you see the bunions. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? We're closer to 65 than 25. Yeah, you are. Well, come next week. Uh, you are. <laughs> you are. I'm not. You are. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not texting you anymore. Okay. <laughs> Counting down six months till you're fucking old. I guess so. Is that it? Oh, that, that's old. You're gonna be old. Two quarters. There you go. It happens. It happens. That's hey. Look, it's better than the alternative. It's funny. Like things are starting to. My like, I have to go to an MRI tomorrow. Because my neck is finally starting to have issues. Your repair? My repair from 97 when I busted it, broke it. But it's starting to, I got to do something different. So they're going to go in and take an MRI and then hopefully give me some options that aren't surgical. So we'll see. Peptides. Good luck with that. Yeah, well, there's. That's probably on your radar. It might be on the, but I've got a, I don't know. 
I don't want to get into it. It's just long diatribe of sh- shit, but let's get in. Let's my neck is pulling left. Let's, let's, do, some, <laughs> oh, let's no. do some peptides. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's what yeah. I would like to, I would recommend. Recommend it. All right. We got a connection, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yo, yo, you guys familiar with drain flies? Drain flies. The little like little, flies that come out of your drain? Yeah. The little gnats like? Yeah. No yeah, but they've got like bigger wings than your typical gnat. They're just like a little more, they're a little the more substantial than a gnat. Uh-huh. You ever have any? Not that I can recall. You got a, what you, you got an issue with putting down your drain? Dude, I got an infestation of drain flies. But it's not coming out of my drain. Like the way my shower's set up, uh-huh. like a little bit of water can get into like this like channel and stagnant water. I guess they just like they somehow magically appear. Yeah. Which doesn't make it's like when you see cobwebs in like the corner of your bedroom and you're like hmm. but you never see a spider and you're like, first off, what the fuck are you catching up there, bro? Like <laughs> Yeah. And have you ever <laughs> seen you ever seen like like you get like a bunch of rain and then like a puddle forms? Yeah. You're like, how in the world? You see a fish in there. You're like, where? Yeah. <laughs> where, 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 did where did you come, come from? from? Like, how did yeah. you how'd you get in there? Well, that's these drain flies, they just show up. And there's this one spot in this, like, it's like a rectangular piece of metal as the base of the, the shower door. Yeah. And it's got a little spot where water gets in. I guess the water stands in there. I'm not, before you get into this, I've never been a fan of glass and like hard shower doors. Because of those tracks, They're like annoying. mold, and it gets gross in there. All kinds oh, yeah. of stuff. Like, yeah. I'd rather just have a curtain or one of those, like, the ultimate shower, if I could build my own shower, if I had a big enough bathroom, is the one so where... So big, there's nothing? Yeah, where you yeah. just go in and make a make a turn. And, yeah, it's just and, an open. And yeah. The walls either goes all the way up or it's like five, yeah, six yeah, feet, yeah. and it's... And yeah, you it's go just, in and you do like a 180 and the shower yeah, is like... splash five, all yeah, over you. Exactly. Cause, yeah, because that's part of the... Cause you actually, I know I, I, over time with those metal track door or not even the sliders, just a swing. Yeah. Every two years, I don't care how clean you're trying to get it. You got to replace that clean. rubber. Yeah. That slip. I'm, and that strip. they're usually in like smaller bathrooms too, where like wh- when you shut the glass, it's like, well, if I could, I could accidentally bang into that thing. Like if it was a curtain, it wouldn't be a problem. I agree. Oh, yeah. Well, like I'm sure the. Was your in your greenfield, the older home, eighties, late seventies, early eighties houses? Yeah. The master bass usually had a stand up shower, and that door entrance was maybe eighteen inches little, or oh, two, yeah. just a swing guy tiled up. That was the first thing we did was replace the bathroom in my the house was built in the mid seventies, and it was a three foot, thirty six inch shower. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't bend over in it. I couldn't <laughs> raise my arms in it. Yeah, like, I'm not built for those. It was like me no, showers. It was like it was like my RV shower, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they're just glorified RV showers. So you want to know how to get... got? Oh well, I've got some techniques like vinegar. Well, I was saying, like, it just says I was going to say bleach or something, but that might be too harsh. But no, but you're right. It's it's uh, organic material that's sitting in your lines that causes the and stagnant water for the flies to come around. So this little gap, the water gets in, and we had this happen last year. Where all of a sudden, like every day, we're taking a shower, and I'm like, huh, I got these little like flying bugs, and then like the next day, you're like. Damn, I got a lot of flying bugs. And then you're in Not there a and good it's like, feel it's like a, when you're in a shower. No, and there's a swarm around mm. your head. You're like, what the hell? So I got this like this little like uh, bottle that has like like a, a mister. Has like a tip on it that I can like squeeze water out of. And like I went down in there and like I I gooshed it one good time, like real hard. I think it's douched. And then all of a sudden it's the same 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 yeah. thing, right? Same process. Yeah. <laughs> like my wife only used gooshes. Oh, okay. Oh. Huh. Yeah, she's not a Summer's Eve guy. Yeah, she's more of a goosher. Yeah, real goose bag that one. Damn, like the uh, like the candy, not, yes. gu- not gushers but goosers. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Blinded by the light. Yeah, Start. wrapped up like a goose bag, like a goosh. Yeah, <laughs> that's. I mean, that's just how it goes. Everybody knows this, but so I squeeze this thing in there, and then all of a sudden, out of these holes, like at first it looked like dirt coming out, and then I was like, oh shit, they're larva. Ugh. And a half inch long, and they're just squiggling uh, around all up in my shower. Would you, was it water, or was it something and water? No, I just started with water. I just, yeah. I like, like, gooshed it. And then all of a sudden, like, all these larvae started to come out. You see them, like, flopping and flapping. I'm like, oh, my fuck. Like, my mm. shower is full of maggots. Disgusting. It is so foul. And then, so, we ended up doing, like, 
the vinegar traps that you put, like you like put vinegar in them and, and this, soap. This just says half cup of salt, half cup of baking soda, and a cup of vinegar mixture. Pour it down the drain and let it sit overnight. But this isn't a drain situation. Well, so yeah. yeah, pour it in there and let it soak down those little holes. So that's what we started having to do. Like first we put them out we were catching them, but they were coming faster than we were catching yeah. them. So then that's when I gooshed it and I saw them come out. And then we ended up having to put the vinegar and baking oh. soda stuff. And we started squeezing that through it. And this became like weeks of like every day you take a shower. And I was like, look, you know the rule. You got to fill up this thing while yeah. you're in there and you got to goosh it. And then like, well, at night. Well, this just the in chemical. the master bath? Yeah. Oh, the dirty ass kids. They don't mm-hmm. have any. So this is, they're in the space, the top of the track and the like bottom of it. So it's. No, the track little, is like a rectangle. Right. But there's weedy there's holes. A, there's in a it. hole. Yeah. Yeah. And they just, the water gets in there and they just, in between there. they love it. They love Fun. it. Fun. But so just yesterday I was taking a shower. Like I thought I defeated them, but it was about this time last year. I didn't know this must be the drain flying time of year. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Cause all of a sudden one was like, Zzzz. my wife was like, go get the thing. And so we just squirted it tonight. And I'll be damned if more of these maggot things, they're like black maggots that come flopping. Gross. Out. The so- reason, oh, drain fly larvae are difficult to drown because they are able to trap air bubbles and remain submerged in them for days or more yeah they're the best the best idea. i would find something like harsh like bleach like fuck the like vinegar like the holistic way i'd be like i'm getting some fucking chemicals in there we've definitely thrown some chemicals in there and then i find that i get to replace the grout yeah or like the 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 caulk mm-hmm. like it all screws it up that stuff's great for water but it hates bleach yeah my uh my master bath we redid 16 years ago and i need to get somebody in there like scrape all the caulk out and regrout and i gotta replace the caulk every year it gets moldy and i got the stuff that's guaranteed never to mold and it molds there's something completely whack about the way this whole thing was built no that's every i mean it's i don't know bathrooms are bad i mean well that yeah that's different that's just i don't know what's causing that but like in a in a moist environment, like mold's gonna happen. Like it just doesn't. Where do these things even come from, though? Like, yeah. It's not like I'm putting food yeah. in there. No, I'm putting soap. Yeah, if anything, it's soap and water. And this like, says use a grease degrader because it breaks down the organic material that they feed off of, and they they die. Slowly start. Ooh, WD forty. Yeah, something that breaks down. It that says d- a that grease displaces degrader. water. That's what I need. I need some WD forty with that long tube. Yeah. And just keep that shit in the shower. And my wife would be like, what is happening? And like, it smells good. Actually, I love the smell. I love the smell. When I worked in a shop, we used to, me and another guy that worked in a shop, we talked about like how much we love the smell of WD-40. And we'd be like, that should be a fucking cologne or deodorant. You know, it, for men. Yeah. I think you put a little of that on your hands and then like walk in somewhere. Yeah. Probably going to be like, ah, I better give him the discount. Yeah. He's oh. all right. This says once you think you've gotten rid of them, You're fucked. start flushing your toilets and running your water for a little bit longer in your sinks to eliminate them. But his so aren't like coming for, from a drain. Yeah, mine thing. aren't in the drain, though. No, but they the My, flies have, are coming from el- elsewhere. Ooh, pour it down all the drains, too, not just where they are. We've been we've been doing that, like, but I've been going, like, Drano heavy. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm going to kill everything. Yeah. Nothing's hmm. gonna live except for drain flies. You know, you just pour gasoline down there, light it on fire, you could start go. again. Yeah, <laughs> that's the beauty of Reset, homeownership. Yeah, you're constantly just going. Oh, I just want to start over. Oh, you're man. fixing one thing after another. Yeah, it's gonna. I looked up a. I guess every year, you know, you get a little bit of the the snails. Like have a they come out. Oh yeah, and we got this one tree that kind of has been slowly growing that overhangs a skylight, and I'll never forget. First time I really even noticed about last year, I looked up and I was like, what? And there's like debris on this, on the skylight, but then there was just trails and it looked like a pattern. It almost looked like snake skin on top of my sky. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? And then I looked up and there's a little guy just crawling right across. They're leaving a pattern. It's like, oh, it's like, I got to get rid of these guys. Yeah. yeah. They they crawl up the side of our house every now and then. Yeah. Those tracks everywhere. It's like my Sisyphus table, just different. Yeah. Yeah, you still rocking with that thing? You still fucking with it? Absolutely, it's hard. To, it's hard to catch a buzz and walk past it. You're like, yeah. <laughs> what is this? Doing good. Look at the geometric patterns here. It's like a little DMT trip every time yeah. you go by. Mm. It's funny what you'll find that. in your house sometimes. Because I did a, I did a home inspection where you get the, you get the. Uh, I walked into the attic 
and there was a snake, bats, and a wasp's yeah. nest, like all in one spot. Yeah. And come to find out, you get wasps that will nest in your house and then, you know, like, uh, on the gable vent, and then the bats follow the wasp as a food source. And then snakes will start going up the house to get in if they get in. And you find there's a lot of rule. And I walked into one house and walked up, up to the attic. This is before the home inspection. I was like, oh, I'm not going any further. There's three things going in here that uh. I'm not going to deal with. I was really surprised how nimble snakes can just get right up the side of a house. No problem. Dude, snakes can get almost out of anything in yeah. between the smallest cracks. Like The only thing no they can't nimble. deal with is that deer stuff, the mesh. Yeah. You just roll that mesh up uh, and put it a lot. Man, as soon as they crawl into it, they can't get it's out. too late. They try to come back. Now they're getting twisted, twist everything they do. I don't know how many like black snakes I've had to cut out of netting back here. Because oh, that's in between your, your oh, yeah. that's in between your rails on your fence. Yeah. Because huh. I'm like, no, I'd like to keep them alive, but they just get they just get wrapped up. Yeah, it's deer mesh or something. So what's the what do we got going on here? That is the new Rich Brow. Now, Rich Brow is back. Now, people, dude, from, that's cool. That's a cool looking label. Yeah, people from Richmond would know about Rich Brow. Rich Shh. Brow is like one of the oldest breweries we had. In fact, I had my rehearsal dinner at Rich Brow. That was a dope club back in the day. And before it was Rich Brow, it was the bus stop, which was a popular establishment. Mm. You're talking about in the slip, right? Yeah, yeah. When you're going at on the corner on the left, yeah. Um, but this is their it, basic lager. This I thought the is, bus stop turned into Have a Nice Day. No. Um, what was that was there before Have a Nice Day? Flood Zone. That's Flood Zone. That was just thinking. Yep. This is the Rich Brow Lager 5.0. It's in a 16-ounce can. It's got a pretty long diatribe. I'll read it. Imagine it's, the third time the word diatribe has been used tonight. I guess tonight's mm, episode is just the diatribe. It was 1933, and President Franklin Roosevelt had just ended Prohibition. Within a few months, Home Brewing Co., was rolling out the first kegs of Rich Rail Lager to retailers in Richmond. Over the next 35 years, brewmasters George Berniner, Berniner Sr. and his successor, Frank B. Walmeyer, helped grow Obviously. the Rich Rail brand to almost 100,000 barrels per year. Unfortunately, increasing competition from large national brands drove Home, Brew- dro- drove home Brewing Co., that's the name, to close and temporarily faded into history. To close and temporarily faded into history. Today, Rich Brow Lager lives on and was awarded a gold medal for the best American lager in Virginia at the 2022 Virginia Craft Beer Cup. Prove it, Rich Brow. <laughs> I, I feel like That's pretty- every local brewery has, has, a gold. has multiple beers that have won multiple fucking... Yeah, because things. 20, there's yeah. the your mom competition where only your mom gets to vote. Yeah. Well, this is local. Yeah. I mean, it's always something. But this is the trend for the last three or four years with breweries, microbreweries, because the IPA has run its course almost because it got so saturated and people are going to breweries saying, hey, can I get something that's light? Nobody ever had. Yeah, you want a basic like, beer. And this is going to be there. Fuck all you guys that are just now getting on the IPA suck train because I was fucking driving the fucking engine years ago. Yeah, you've been pretty hardcore about it. Okay, now you see that mm. right there. They like they liked IPAs because it was different. I stand by that. That beer right there, after one sip, that's a good basic beer. Right. That's an American beer. It's a little sweet. It's not too hoppy. Could have been a little bit colder, but that's just personal. But that's because it was sitting in my hot fridge until 4 o'clock today. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. These guys don't care. I'm going to have to do a podcast <laughs> later. I better put this stuff in the fridge. Not to bite off Miller Lite's uh, new ad campaign, but this is a beer that tastes like a beer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I like this basic bitch beer quite a bit. I've had a second sip, and it's just further... See, it says here on their website, it says, we went back to the basics with our Rich Brow Lager at 5% ABV. It's one of the lightest and most refreshing beers in the portfolio. The newly handcrafted recipe produces a traditional light Pilsner Lager style. The grain bill is entirely German classic malts of Pilsner, Vienna, and Munich. A subtle Sais hop profile brings everything nice into balance. I don't need any of that shit to tell me. (laughs) After primary fermentation, it's lagered for six weeks at 33 degrees. It's got a lot of flavor. Yeah. 
for being a 5.0 basic beer. It's a basic beer with good flavor. It's Ooh. nice. Hard not to like. No. In fact, if you don't like this beer, you don't like beer. If you like basic bitch beer, that's a four. That's the end of my story. It's a four. It's malty a little bit. It's got some sweetness to it. It's it's they they haven't done anything in any direction to make it disagreeable. Yep. It tastes yeah. exactly like a beer should taste, and I don't just mean American beers. I mean yeah. like literally beer all over the world. Oh, if you told me this was a German <laughs> lager, I wouldn't disagree with you. Because it tastes just yeah. like real beer. Yeah, German pills. That it's is a classic. That is a correct beer. Anywhere in the world, you pop that down in front of somebody, they'd go, yeah, that's good. That's a four. That's how you do beer. Yeah. Is that the score you're giving it? Giving it a four. Yeah. That's a rich brow lager. It's classic. It's good. I dig it. I have nothing else to say. Like, this reminds me of when you say, I want, before all the crazy IPAs. Give me a beer with some flavor. But like this is this is the this is the when you said I'm going to go cut the grass for an hour and a half in the hot sun, and I'm going to come in and drink a beer that's been sitting, and I would just want to I want a beer. And somebody says I got a beer for you. This is the beer that I yeah. But you could have said that in German. You could have said that in Portuguese. You could have said that in French. (laughs) You know, you could have said that in Spanish. Yeah. You could have said that in English. And if they handed you this beer, you would have gone perfectly acceptable. That's a beer. I like that beer. This tastes like, to me, like if you grew up like most Americans, and you grew up drinking Budweiser, Coors Light, whatever, and you went to like a cool bar that had like good draft beer before, and this is to Stu's point, before the fucking Hunter Tap bars where you had fucking s'mores flavored beer and fucking yeah. foot flavored IPAs, but you wanted like, you were, you were like, I'm not drinking a Budweiser tonight. I'm drinking that fucking cool tap over there. That's what this is. I mean, is that better than a Heineken? Yes. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Like that's a that's Cause, a really cause, good beer. Because Heineken, I'm still I'm still never in love with the skunk of those skunk type beers. They just don't. This doesn't have the skunk to it, so no. I appreciate this way more. You think that's better than Devil's Backbone's Gold Leaf Lager? Because mm-hmm. that is the closest thing that I can. I haven't had one of those in years, obviously, but I would. It might with, be. It, it, with, without having one to taste right now, and this is the new one in front of me, I'd probably lean with this one. I'd say those are the two. I feel like this one probably, I don't remember the gold leaf having this much This flavor. one has enough flavor that in Europe it would be a beer. Yeah. This is, yeah. It's, it's almost sweet on the back end. It is sweet. Yeah. It's sweet. As soon as I tasted it, it was sweet. But it it's like, malty mm. too. It's the malty sweetness. Yeah. No, yeah, I got. Mm. I got. That's give a this. mad difficult beer to brew because any imperfection comes through in that. I w- I would go for as well, like if I were still drinking beer, this is what I'd want to drink all of that. I want a bunch of those. Yeah, I'm pissed off that I don't have a bunch of. Yeah, those. usually I get stuck with these delis. And I get all these shit delis, and then you get one like this, and go, damn it. I need more of that. This is one I'm of the ones you a, bought one of. Of yeah. course. <laughs> I'm on the fence because I I don't know. My life would be completely different. I've never walked into a rich brow. <laughs> but, oh, you're biased against rich brow? No. There's a lot there's more a to lot, that There's story. a lot yeah. more to that. I heard it's exactly good and bad, what he just said. <laughs> the good uh, news is that he loves his family. Yeah. yeah. Um <laughs> I mean, they could. It's it's basic. It's basic marketing. It's just a can that says lager. Um, it's cool looking the can. It tastes great, but I'm. Just, I don't know if I can give it a four. I'm not asking you to give it a four. I'm asking I'm you to give, give it a three score. and a half. Yeah, that's exactly that's how where this I'm works. Headed. That's where I'm headed. That's good. And I can uh, I can justify the half point on the marketing. So you're saying negative marketing? Oh wow, four. It would have been a four, but I think I the, like marketing, the marketing. I think the marketing. It, I think that logo's rad. He took it down a I peg know. because it had a crest on it instead of a fucking dog, and it said Rich Brown instead of fucking. Oh, a hundred percent. Hollywood. If this said some <laughs> other, if he was like, if I don't it know, said that, the brewery he worked at, if it said no, this it said was the new Saint Pauli girl, he would mm-hmm. love it. He's like that new Saint Pauli girl is mm. really buttoned up. Be a fucking five if it had. If it was purple and gold with LSU or fucking <laughs> yeah. uh, New Orleans or West Virginia or some bull- Isn't Notre that Dame the team? or hey, hey. one of his many favorite teams. Are the five states Brendan's from? 
I'm only from three. Three. Multiple areas of one Multiple. of them. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I roll. Overall, I would seek this beer out. I would buy it. I would drink it. We would it's recommend in my, this beer. Yeah. That's a deli winner. Yeah. I, I told you I had a good feeling about the beer today. Nice. <laughs> Truth is, I thought you were going to grab the other one. <laughs> so, <laughs> if I do want to tear down the wall a little, I didn't really think. So here's a quick week. question for you, Brendan. Since you're drinking the Miller Lite, what's yeah. the comparison between the two? Ooh. That's nowhere near as good as that. Miller yeah. Lite, Miller Lite is, is nowhere. Yeah. But Miller Lite's just average. I don't think anyone would say it is. I wouldn't even think Miller Lite would. It. But I don't even need the, you know what I mean? Like Miller Lite, Miller Lite, Lite is made, though. Miller Lite is also made to have a dozen. Yeah. That beer is made to have 10. Like a grown <laughs> <laughs> And it comes in a bigger can. <laughs> yeah, so it works Ten out. bigger ones. <laughs> yeah. It works itself out. You only have to have six of those, obviously. Have y'all tried that Royals Farm fried chicken? I keep hearing people. I, have, I haven't had a the, chance. Not this one, but I've been to a Royals Farm and eating their fried chicken. I keep hearing so about had, it. Mm-hmm. Is it what's it? Is it worth its weight? I'm starting to really become a fan of Royal pretty Farm fucking fried good. chicken. Yeah, their chicken biscuits are pretty fucking spot on. It's it's done right as far as these convenience stores, fast food places. I mean, I don't know what you got to just put it in fast food, right? No, that's a that's a gas station. It is, but it's still the food would have to be fast. Like Sheets and Wawa are fast food, right? It's on she- yeah, it's, it's, it's on same. par with Sheets and Wawa as far as what it's they not are. like the mom and pop places you go to out in the fucking sticks no 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 i've had i've had far better fried chicken i'm just saying i i was in a royal farms this past week and i i was like you know what i don't want chicken was my but so you I, were in a royal yeah. farm <laughs> but i figured they were like a sheets they were gonna have everything yeah and so i i hit the the screen you know and it came up and they were like subs i was like perfect hit subs chicken They're all chicken tender subs and i was like well I don't want chicken tender sub. Yeah. Like, so I got one. Yeah. And then I got like a four pack of fried chicken. Then I got three thighs. Then I got three <laughs> drums. Like I was like, all right, you know, I'm going camping. So I figure worst case, you know, I just wrap it up, throw it in the cooler. Yeah. And you can eat it all weekend. I could heat it up, you know, on the griddle or something. Just whatever. Turns out that never happened. I never ended up eating any more of the fried chicken. So I had this fried chicken. So I ate Threw it away. No, I ate I ate two pieces that night. I ate my sub. Yeah. Which I thought was fine. I didn't think anything of it. And then I had one of their thighs. I think the move there, because I'd been there before and I got a breast. They have a great biscuit. Yeah, I've had the biscuits. And yeah. they're they're spot on. Yeah. And you can get breakfast stuff. Like there. it's like a Hardy's biscuit, like a Bojangles. Like it's a fucking homemade, like yeah, melt in your mouth. Done right. You're gonna make a mess eating it, like it's Legit. So yeah. our our Royal Farms. I was just reading some. Of, our Royal Farms opened up a little late, but every year from June thirtieth to August thirty first, they do Chicken Palooza, and so um, I love anything Palooza. Yeah, they're yeah. they're promoting their chicken, their different, uh, their world famous lager, which partners with them. It's made by Heavy Seas Brewery, but every ten cents of every chicken box sold goes to a local charity. But there's a competition that. Hold on, what's with Heavy Seas? Heavy Seas Brewer, Brewery. It's the part of their food. We need royal Farms. famous lager that they pair up with the we need uh, chicken royal sandwiches. Lager. Dude, and themed I've swag. had a lot of heavy sea stuff because it's all pirate themed, and most of it's fucking garbage. So yeah, uh, we need yeah. to try. We need I try, that. try that. Yeah, well, because it's a Maryland chain. Yeah. But there's but they during those sixty days you have the opportunity if you when you buy a box of chicken or whatever to win uh, chicken for a whole year th- for the next year. And nothing shreds you up faster <laughs> than fried chicken. chicken. <laughs> So yeah, man. I don't know, man. That that Royal's Farm Royal Farms chicken. So I went with the uh, with like the drums and then the mm-hmm. thighs because I'm starting to figure out that I, I I would actually rather have dark meat like in a situation like that. It's just juicier. Yeah, but like everybody covets the 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 breast and all this stuff. Like you no. can dry that out real quick. Wings and legs, and then because I won't because the breasts and the back. It's gonna, you, to your point, it'll dry out pretty quick unless you get it just You're gonna right. fuck around and nitpick fried chicken? It's all fucking delicious. It is, but I'd rather have a thigh than a breast. I've just learned this. I used to always go with yeah, the white yeah. meat way. Yeah. Because everyone always told me, oh, mm. white meat's the better meat. Like, yeah. don't have the dark meat. And I think that just got ingrained in me as a uh, kid. Yeah. And then, like... And it's a bigger piece. But then you start having a thigh and you go, damn. 
that piece was exceptionally good. And it took me till now, yeah. age, yeah. like in the last year before I was like, wait, no, I'm done with this. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have an opinion. I'm going to be true to myself. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be true. To, I switched from Coors Light to Miller Light. <laughs> yeah. And I stopped getting the breast. I'm a breast man everywhere else, but not when it comes to fried you can chicken. Still, we're still learning. Yeah, and I'll yeah. still have a Coors Light and a, yeah. and, a, and a fried breast. Yeah. I'm fine with it. But there are times, there are times when you want to go slumming. And every once in a while, I just want a, bu- a bucket full of the, just fried skin. No meat. Just give me the crust. That is some Louisiana <laughs> shit right there, man. You can buy that? I don't know. I bet he has a place no, down in like Louisiana. You can get, like, when it does extra... disappoint me when people fucking don't eat the chicken skin. I'm like, They pull it off? Yeah. Like, what oh, are you doing? Best yeah. part, well, it's not the best part. It's, it's part of it. You got to eat it. The it's best just is like when you're eating anything and you get a little bit of both. You get the bite of with course. the meat yeah. and the skin. I took a bite off the other day and I pulled all the skin off. And I yanked that shit back in my mouth and slapped it back on it. Yeah. God forbid my next bite isn't as good as that one. Or you at least like yeah. take it out of your mouth. You sit to the side and you go bite a chicken, bite a skin. Yeah. yeah there you get, go. Mix get, it get back, back together. together. Don't don't screw this up. Yeah. But that Royal Farms chicken, it has just enough spice that you go, mm-hmm. hey, is that spice? Oh, okay. But not enough spice that if you gave it to a five year old, they'd go, oh, it's too hot. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. You're anyone, not guzzling a gallon of water after you. Anyone with any semblance palate, of spice yeah. tolerance is going to be like, oh, that's really good. It's like putting a little pepper on something. Yeah. It's just better. Man, I've I've turned the corner. Like, that stuff is fantastic. And I can tell you, if you take it, throw it in a cooler for 48 hours and let that cooler bake in the sun, obviously a Yeti, so it stays <laughs> cold, and then drive it all the way back home and throw it back in the air fryer... It comes back to life. It may be even better. Nice. I think the trick is you buy Royal Farm. Double fried. Put it in a Yeti. You wait two days, and then you air fry it, and it's the best Royal Farm. Fried chicken is one of those foods that's kind of better with age, right? Like spaghetti is always better the next day. You heat it back up. You're like, woo. So Royal Farms, I think, just trumped uh, Wawa and Sheets because I just plugged in your address, and they deliver. Ooh. Order online right now. So what do you want? I got all the wings up. Oh Ready no, go. I'm 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 <laughs> mad stuffed. Tell Brendan's girls because that shit. No, be, man, they will. They, you can order online. Yeah. They deliver it. It no says shit. curbside pickup. I mean, yeah. Did I help your menu. cause yesterday with that? By the way, I was trying to be helpful. Based on the hundred dollar from order Chipotle <laughs> I did last <laughs> night. No. I came by the I came by the pout house and. Brendan and uh, the Duke were here watching football, and one of his daughters comes out. It's like, we just bought the the Barbie movie on your Amazon account. And uh, Brendan's like, uh, thanks. And I was like, you look hungry. Y'all should order some treats, too. She's like, yeah, we're going to get Chipotle. I was like, oh, y'all going to get it? She goes, no, 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 we're going to we're gonna door dash it. And I was Ooh. like, yeah, definitely. You guys should definitely door dash it. Yeah. <laughs> Troy was fucking me over all day yesterday. He was like, hold on. Did you did you buy the Barbie movie on Amazon or on Google? He's like, no, you got it on Amazon so it stays in your library. He's like, he's like order it again. Order it again. I was like, yeah, do get it. the second one. I was like, wait, no, you're not helping. And then he's like, he's like, no, don't go get it. Have them bring it to you. It's just more convenient. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Troy, you are not helping. And I can tell you, I spent $30 on the Barbie movie yesterday and $100 on Chipotle. And you know what I got out of that? Nothing. One burrito. You actually got Jeez food? Louise. They thought of you? Oh, I texted my order. Oh, okay. Okay. How? They didn't text you asking what you wanted. Yeah. My wife did. Oh, wow. My oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And said, don't forget to bring in your credit card. <laughs> That's where DoorDash gets you is because you can't order any combo nothing's a combo meal like when you go to if you go to chick-fil-a if you go to chipotle oh, it's a special menu no, it's no, more it's, expensive you have to you just order you have to order each item by item that's, yeah there's they, no they discount make, for the meal yeah. yeah they make more money there's no way. there's yeah. no that's that's not where doordash gets you doordash no. gets you because you're fucking stupid lazy piece of shit <laughs> and you don't fucking go get your own food fucking two miles up the road uh. that's where doordash gets you it ain't the fucking nickels and dimes you're gonna save on the fucking P- well, it's all part meal. of it. It's all part of it. Chipotle goes, no more meal. They separate everything out and charge you. And then DoorDash goes, we're going to add well, you on top of that. We're going to add some screws. And Chipotle is even one of the better ones because every menu item has gone up in price. Yeah. When you go through the app. Everything has gone up in price. No, like, like if you go into the store, a burrito costs a dollar less than on the app. 
They've yeah. raised the price intentionally on everything. Yeah. But man, that hundred people are still lazy. That, that hundred thirty dollar burrito last night for four burritos. Oh, I'm. Th- oh no, I walked in there. They had guacamole and chips. Yeah. No, they were they were living the dream. Well, watching the Barbie movie again. I'm on- sure you guys saw it. Made me think about it, but where Subway just launched the three inch sub. What? Yeah. I did not see this, but yeah. this sounds stupid. They're saying it's probably, you know, inflation or cost of doing business, but they're offering a three inch sub five days ago. They went they went and pushed it out there. For what? Six bucks? Oh man. yeah. Many versions. <laughs> I mean it's the sub it's the what do you it's for the uh, when Jimmy John's does their samplers, you know, they they go by businesses and have a box, like a lunch box full of yeah, all yeah, the little, yeah, little like, ones. Here you go, sampler. Well now you can pay for it. <laughs> It's a steal. <laughs> I haven't done my 50 today. Oh, yeah. I got to knock out a 50. Yeah, thanks for roping me into your stupid fucking shenanigans. Yeah. Last night, he and the Duke have been out here all day, so we, I get a text from, it's a, just three of us on this text, I get a text from Brendan going, hey, you guys want to do a 50 push-up a day challenge for a month? Oh. Which, of course. Today's day one if you want in on that action. Which, of too. course, means... I don't want to do this stupid thing on my own. Let me pressure you guys into doing right. it. Well, actually, Duke, we're doing it for you. The Duke because because you're cutting you're 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 on it. We haven't discussed it on the air. I, I won't get into sure. it unless you choose to. But you're doing pretty pretty radical dieting right now. Yeah, but you're not doing me any favors. Yes, we've when, done this before. We've done the fifty so push up challenge. Fifty in a twenty four hour period or yes. fifty knocked out. Whatever once. it's fifty. Whatever you day. can get a fifty a day. 50 okay, a day. Gotcha. You can you can get down on your knees fifty times. Okay. That's hey, where anything, is that? Anything? Where is that going? All right. Yeah. I was waiting. I was <laughs> like, like, who wants to pick it up and run with it? Who wants that? <laughs> Teed that up. No, no, no. <laughs> but I owe I owe fifty push ups today. Oh. You're gonna try to knock out fifty right now? Yeah, and I'm gonna on challenge air? and I'm gonna challenge the listeners to, to do, take the next thirty days, starting from when this comes out. Do the fifty push ups. Yeah. Fifty push ups a day. You will feel better at the end of that 30 days. Or sore. You'll be sore, <laughs> yeah. but but you will get stronger. Like, if on day one you can do 10 in a row and you got to do it five times. Yeah. By the end, you might be knocking out 25, 30 in a row. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, it I mean, works. who was it? Herschel Walker? Nothing but sit-ups and push-ups. Yeah. And what, what you don't realize is with a push-up, you're already planking to get you're just that. adding a push up. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So your stupid idea was after I left, you and the fucking Duke were like, we're gonna fucking trick Troy into fucking doing some working out, even though he doesn't want to. Yeah. Oh, smart. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. And you bit it, hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> and then I woke up this morning and Troy Troy sends me a text and he goes, Hey, I'm a, let's do it. Let's do a 30 day no drinking challenge. Yeah. I said, I get to pick the next challenge, right? Okay. 30 days no alcohol. Not so fun, is it now? No, I didn't. No. <laughs> but but what I'm doing is trying to better you. What you're doing is trying to make me worse. Oh yeah, that's what. Oh it yeah, is. yeah, yeah, yeah. Taking yeah, my yeah. taking my spinach. There's no benefits yeah. of not drinking for thirty days. No, none at all. I haven't seen them. No science. <laughs> no science. None. Clearly. No. No. What do they always say? They say ten beers a day keeps yeah. the doctor. What is the old? Is that the old adage? Ten. Yeah. Ten. Is it seven? I think it's ten ounces, maybe. Actually. <laughs> 10 ounces of beer a day probably would help keep the doctor away. That has been proven. <laughs> Everything beyond that is genuinely problematic. <laughs> I'm getting unsolicited health advice from fucking... <laughs> Two drunks on a by, couch by eating by fried fuck, chicken. Yeah. <laughs> fucking DoorDash and fucking $100 worth of fucking yeah. food. We are literally like, telling him how to get in shape. We're Dude, am eating I giving fried out, chicken. Uh, am I giving yeah. unsolicited fucking life yeah. advice to these assholes? No, if you but these two are out conspiring how to... against me. If you in, haven't figured... in your best interest. <laughs> thanks for me. Thanks for looking out for me, guys. I was yeah. totally a train wreck yeah. before you guys came Troy, up with man, 50 have, push-ups. If you haven't this figured will out... change my life around. Troy, if you haven't figured out how to order uh, fast food through DoorDash on your Amazon account while watching TV yeah. with the remote, you're, you're missing out. Yeah, that'll you be next, too. <laughs> Then you'll be just shred dog, dude. <laughs> shred dog. These guys are fucking every Sunday just eating whatever the fuck they want. Like, uh, it's it's catch well, not you guys maybe, but it's catching up to me. Oh, I got I some can, things I gotta change up here recently. I can I can <laughs> I can feel it. Just we're we're two weeks into football season and my weight's going. Er, er. 
hurt. That's why I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah. fifty push up challenge. Like we got to start. We got to start knocking some shit out. Well, I got a, I got a friend of mine that all he does is he does. Um, he's, Are we counting these off? Oh, he's going to do them all, on air. Counting them okay. off on air. You guys do a podcast. No, we do a podcast. So I don't know if I can trust you. Is that form even decent? One. <laughs> Wait, start over. Two. I wasn't looking. I can't see over the bar. No, but I was uh buddy of mine, he does the he's on a keto diet. He's been on yeah. keto forever, which is, you know, basically a lot of no carbs. Mm-hmm. But he the only carb intake he does is his um get letting himself have a few beers. Yeah. Like every other day or so. And he's yeah. you know, like two or three. So he's kind of managed it. I was like, well, that kind of, you know, counter because if you're doing Is he forcing it down your fucking throat? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that's an interesting theory. Um, do something you want to do on your own and not try to fucking sell your friends on it. Hmm. hmm. Oh, it's awfully quiet. Was that? I think that was twenty five. That was twenty five at least, maybe thirty. That was fifty. The fuck what? it was? No, it wasn't. That yeah, was. Oh, let me do it again. See, it. we'll keep track now. <laughs> Yesterday I wasn't even doing this challenge, and I did sixty. That's awesome. It's just. And what is that? Is it is is one two? Like are you half counting? What do you got going on there? You yuck it up all you want. Those are push. I'm a little winded, being honest. Uh, well, you know what? It's thanks crazy. for doing this, this challenge again for me for something you could easily do in fucking thirty seconds. That's awesome. I'm in the gym every day. I'm aware. You talk about it like a CrossFitter. Oh, I have not gotten that bad. Take it back. Every fucking time we, <laughs> we hang out, you're like, you got to get in the gym. You got to get shredded like me. You got to go to the gym. Go to the gym. Go to the gym. Go to the gym. I'm like, I don't want to go to the gym. Uh-oh. But Uh-oh. you got to go to the gym. It, it is a scientific fact that if you're working out, your body will eat fat. Oh, my God. Oh. The only thing I know that's supposed to be beneficial that at this particular stage in our lives that you can do on the daily it has max benefits is walk two and a half miles, period. The more you walk, the better, obviously. Yeah, that's, and obviously going to the gym is fucking great for you. It's not fucking rocket science. I'm anything fully you aware. Do, I don't need to be fucking reminded of it, but I do get to come here and get reminded of it constantly. <laughs> so it's fun. It's I'm I'm I'm, I'm glad I'm to hear glad that I'm at it's this fun. end of the conversation because <laughs> I was starting to come think. here and tell you guys to not fucking binge drink all the time because that's basically what I get when I come here about how I need to go to the gym all the time and I'm oh. like I don't understand what the issue is here. Just trying to help. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that you are appreciative of it because I was starting to think that you were getting annoyed. But now uh, I'm no, seeing no, that this you're. Is fun. I'm seeing that you're fine. Yeah, everybody's coming around. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness. Well, now I'm doing 50 push-ups a day, so I don't have to go to the gym because that's working out. Dude, I don't know if I could do 50 push-ups, like not like you just did. I could probably yeah. Give me all day. I'll do a couple here and there. You can do but, it, within, but that's fine. That's the whole. You can do point. it within fucking seven minutes. It's not hard. It's basically something to do before you shower. I guess. Now I have to shower. I'm not saying you have to in that time. You're going to hear the benefits of it if you don't. So you better fucking get on board. Yeah. I don't want those drain flies coming around. How did you get the drain flies again? Yeah. I'm doing push-ups in the shower, dropping my junk in the little hole over and over. Just enough stuff to eat on. Ah, that organic material. It happens. It happens. Oh, We'll see. Maybe we get some listeners to do the 50 push-up challenge. Be good. Uh, No. Mm, they they will not. You don't think anyone will take it up? No, not one person. What I can challenge listeners to do is sign up for the M4K golf outing that is yes. coming up very mm, in I need just to sign less up than a month. That. We need to talk about that. Okay. How are we going to do this? Are we going to be a team? Are we going to get our own teams? That's up to well, we, It's that's easy a, if we just form a team because then. Yeah, but I feel like yeah. it, we might get more people if like you go find three other people, I go find three other <clears> people. Right. Because then we've just eliminated the opportunities. That's true. Yeah. So because then it forces other people, people to like yeah. join in. I mean, I could you could easily go find three people that's not in I this gotta, room to play gotta, golf. Does Ely count as someone that we can put on our team, or For should sure. Ely have to start his own foursome? No, he could. I'm I'm fine. Yeah. Mm-mm. I'm just wondering if we should push him. To- I'm asking anyone. I'm already telling people that aren't even participants of M4K that like to play golf. Like, hey, uh, yeah. fucking, I mean, and it's, let's do it. Like, I mean, luckily, Wendy, Hill, Wendy Hill's put it on their website. Uh, I think uh, 
I was talking to Keo, and he's getting the guys that okay to put on their up. side. Yeah, yeah. So, All right, so we do have to sign up our own teams if we have any hope at raising real money. I mean, it really doesn't take a whole lot of people. We're talking, let's see, 40, 80 people. That's across all of M4K. Yeah, I mean, any 80 people, that's giving us 20 teams. Yeah, but I'm saying we're 12. Yeah, if we all, gonna, if we all form cut. our own team, that's 12. That's a big deal. True. Yeah. That'd be nice. That's 1200 bucks. We would see yes. 600 of that towards the team, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. Then. I mean, it's exponential. It just It'll snowball. We just have to get the word out there. I'm doing a few things. Uh, I've already hit up people for some sponsorships. So, so this means I have to get back on Facebook? Oh, Not necessarily. So I got something else for you, Stu, since you're in charge of this. Uh, two of our teammates from Team ITPH want to sponsor a whole. Mm -hmm. What does that there's, entail? There's a caveat. They want to. And I, I don't have a problem with this because it kind of seems fitting with what we do. Sure. They want to sponsor a fucking hole, and they want to sit there and fucking drink beer and fucking talk shit to everybody who comes up to the fucking hole. This is exactly <laughs> why we're doing it where we're doing it, and I would But then support. they don't play. If they're hole sponsoring, they're still they throwing money to. in. What does a hole sponsor cost? It's 100 bucks for the sign on one of the holes. <laughs> okay. So, but would that not be funny? Bucks. Yeah. No, oh, that would be no. encouraged. So is it like hecklers? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I might, I might sponsor a hole. But then you got it. But are you? But so if you sponsor a hole, then you're, you're, you're not do playing. That, you're not playing. Oh, you know what? I want to. I want to make like. A, I would get like a little Teddy Ruxpin, and I'll just put all my insults on it, and I'll be like, push this button before you. This, is, <laughs> this is exactly. That is the kind of thinking I am encouraging, Troy. Yeah, that's. So if they want to sponsor the hole and bring their yard chairs, yeah, and sit there, and be a hey, golfer, 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 but yeah, 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 but yeah. but <laughs> can we? You want to hit from the? You want to move up to the lady tees? <laughs> yeah. Can we give shots of Malort for a donation fee? We can do yeah, so, we want. so there's a lot of things that are going to be happening. Uh, I know that the uh, uh, owner of Windy Hill, Nicole, she's going to be going around offering up different fun items to drink, jello shots and things like that for a charge, but that entire amount goes back to M4K. The work, the Okay. I mean, the world's our oyster. We can do whatever. I mean... Yeah. It's going to be a fun time. Who are these? Are they listeners or are they growers? Who's, who's talking about just heckling at a... It's two of our growers. Two of our growers. Yeah. Are talking about Joe heckling. the Chef's one of them and okay. Sean's the other one. Yeah. Put together a sign. T tell them to reach out to me. All right, so Come Sean, on, Joe. Sean would work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm thinking like, what if somebody was selling $10 shots of Malort? And literally, I'll put up all the Malort. Yeah, but all the money goes straight to our team. Right, that's that's encouraged. Yeah, there's gonna be, be things funny. like that already. So if I did happening. that, but but I feel like Joe the chef would like drink the Malort and just hot. harass people. <laughs> yeah. no. Whereas Sean would be like, he'd be a good yeah, oh yeah. good spokesperson for that for sure. Joe the chef be like six shots of Malort in by like yeah. we're two hours into the tournament. He's like, pussy, yeah. pussy. I'll be like, no, 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 no. This isn't. This is for charity. Yeah, this is for the children. Yeah, if they dress up like the two old guys from the Muppets and just sit up there and yeah. heckle, heckle people. Now that if they did dress up in like the black suits, <laughs> yeah, like sat up there like I haven't seen a golf swing that bad since. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, that would be good. I could deal with that. Okay. That would be funny. I like where this is going. Yeah. So people do need to reach out to us at uh, yeah. inside the pallet house at gmail.com or you can go onto our Facebook page. I believe it is yep. there, right? Yeah. There's yeah. a link for sponsoring a hole. There's a link for registering. Okay. It's $100 a person. Uh, half that money's coming back to M4K. And uh, it's going to be a good time. And I mean, it's a it's a fun course and it's a fun atmosphere. It's not going to be a stuffy, you know, wear long pants and you know. Yeah, I might put together the worst team. There's opportunities for probably a best costume or best dressed things like yeah, that. Oh yeah, I mean, you don't have to be on your you know your Augusta golf shirt and no perfect pants. Yeah, you don't have to be sponsored by Titleist or yeah, yeah, yeah. anybody. <laughs> I need a tracksuit. Uh, hey, you don't have one. I don't own a tracksuit. Do that you? Doesn't seem right. Do I'll you donate. own a tracksuit? No. If you play, if you play, oh, but you would be the guy. Let's see how much money we can raise to get. You're money. just gonna end up shirtless anyway. So why 
fucking around with the tracks. It's going to be cold out there. It's October. Oh, uh, it's going to be perfect because I'm going to get people. We're, we're going to get money. If we get enough money together, how much can we raise to get him to play in his dong strong? Just ask. Just ask. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Nice we're going to donate some money for M4K to get this guy and nothing but his. <laughs> I tell you that in my, my, my gut is that's $2,500 going to me. For my M4K, like I'm gonna donate that in my name. Okay, twenty five hundred dollars. Twenty five hundred dollars? You wouldn't do it for like no t- two? No, I have, I have no desire to be out there in a dong sarong playing golf. Everybody yeah. seem it would not go well. All right, it would not go well. But for the kids, twenty five hundred dollars is probably about where my. Uh, Actually, what's it to get the big pin? Like ten grand? Yeah. <laughs> Let's start at ten. Yeah. Let's start at ten. Ten grand dong sarong. Barefoot. Five grand will get you halfway there. Yeah, donks. No, you gotta have spikes on. That would complete the look. Just wear golf shoes and a donks. Yeah, on? and a golf hat and one golf glove. On the wrong hand, and you're gonna need a ball marker. Oh, where am I gonna keep that? <laughs> Wherever you want. <laughs> donks wrong's pockets aren't real. Next to your, uh, uh, next to your divot. This tool. is going south quick. Divot tool <laughs> coming out of my donks wrong. <laughs> Ball marker. I got, I got tees all up in here. Is that your golf pencil, or are you just happy to see me? Yeah, let's start that bidding at ten thousand dollars. That is officially. But if someone wanted to do a ten thousand, I would I would play the round of golf in a dong sarong and, and Adidas clamshell <laughs> golf shoes. Is that what you have? Yeah, the old clamshell Adidas. Did you make mm. them yourself? No, like. They sell them, and I was oh, like, "Really? Yeah, they they look like the old run." Did you can buy kits now where you can turn any shoe into a spike? Yes, you can like uh, yeah. screw them screw in. Screw them in. Yeah. No, these like Adidas decided to come out with the old Run DMC clam shell, clam shell, clam toe. Jeez. Yeah. And they're dope. Yeah. Nice. So, I never had those. I never thought I was cool enough to pull those off. I didn't, I didn't either. But was, once you get old, and you're like, you golf. This is kind of funny. Yeah, I'm walking around in my Adidas. <laughs> Where it's at. That's why you need a tracksuit. That's why oh, you need. That's why I wanted the tracksuit. See the look. But I was also talking about. Well, we can talk about this next episode. I got. I do you want to, to talk. You about need to field a whole golf team that's nothing but the tracksuits. All four. Run DMC. Oh my gosh. I like where this is going. <laughs> yeah, I like where I, this is going. Talk. All right. Well, thank yeah, you guys. A, theme, a golf theme, like a theme team, would be funny. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, especially oh, this is this is Caddyshack 2.0. Yeah, so this tournament's going off the rails quick. And, and it's, it's, just to let people know, I played since my oldest was born. I played four rounds of golf. So like I'm, and I haven't played one in seven eight years. I am coming out of retirement just for this because it's going to be so much fun. It's good cause, and it will be fun. I assume you can bring Bluetooth speakers on the course. Yes. That'll be 100% on point. What was that? What was that? Is that Siri? Somebody Your is... phone's ringing? Uh-oh. That was weird as shit. What can you do? Yeah, I'd like to have a mariachi band follow me around on the course. And a personal ball washer. What's the difference? <laughs> 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 okay <laughs> well thank you guys so much for tuning in this week we certainly do appreciate the support if you haven't had a chance to cincinnati swap the person next to you what are you waiting for they hear you laughing yeah you go over there and sign them up it's real easy you grab their phone you open up the app and you subscribe them to inside the pallet house if you haven't had a chance to rate and review we'll always accept that too we like the five-star variety the best so that'd be cool Definitely. For sure. If you have topics or questions, reach out to us at inside the pallet house at gmail.com or you can always find us on Facebook or Instagram and Twitter. What is this? Okay. Uh, why are we... Did you not see this? I just right saw there. something no. happen right Chubb went down with a bad knee injury. 45 degree angle, the wrong direction. Yeah. I know no one likes to hear about fantasy teams, but I do have a fantasy team that's predicated entirely, entirely on Nick Chubb. In fact, they're called the Hot Chubb Time Machine. Well, oh. guess what? You're in trouble. Um, Just like in the the movie. Change the name. Yeah. But you're going to wish you could get in a hot chub time machine. Yeah. Go back to week one and two. Yeah. 
Well, that sucks because he fucked up a knee long before. Well, this is not good. Hey, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll be talking to you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Peace out. That's a pretty good podcast, don't you think?